It's not our job to tell you, Senator Rubio, how to protect us. The fact that we even have to do this is appalling. Our job is to go to school, learn, and not take a bullet. You need to figure this out. That's why you were unfortunately elected. Your job is to protect us, and our blood is on your hands. Those are just some of the students who survived that school massacre in Parkland, Florida. They're demanding change, and they're taking their message to Washington, D.C. on March 24th for what they hope will be a giant protest and march of students fed up with school shootings. Joining us now to discuss that and what Congress can do is Democratic Congressman Jim Himes of Connecticut. Good morning, Congressman. Good morning, Allison. So listen, I mean, the students couldn't say it any better, but when you hear what Senator Rubio said, I mean, right in the hours after this school shooting, he, he said basically, um, well, I mean, I'll just, let, I'll, I'll just let him say it. I won't even quote it. Here's what he said right after that on Thursday. If someone's decided I'm going to commit this crime, they'll find a way to get the gun to do it. That doesn't mean you shouldn't have a law that makes it harder. It just means understand, to be honest. It isn't going to stop this from happening. You could still pass the law, per se, but you're still going to have these horrible attacks. He thinks that a law wouldn't stop it from happening. What do you say to that? Well, I mean, it's just one of the many absurdities we hear from those people like Marco Rubio, like the Speaker of the House, who was in Florida last week and didn't bother to stop by and hear from people who suffered this tragedy. It's one of the many, many absurdities. I mean, think about the point. Well, okay, just because people are going to commit murder or just because they're going to, you know, commit larceny, gosh, that we shouldn't pass those laws. Of course we should. And Allison, what makes what makes this particularly tragic is that there's things that we could do that that have, you know, three quarters to ninety percent of the American public behind them. Things uh, like universal background check, just making sure you can't buy a gun unless you've had a check, making sure that nobody has access to a twenty round magazine. I could go on and on and on. But the point is for guys like Marco Rubio, it's muscle memory because they know that if they change their tune that they will have to deal with the NRA. And that's why, you know, young men like Cameron, who just spoke on your, on your air, uh, make, make me feel so good. You know, young people now standing up and joining uh, adults who've been banging this drum for a very long time. I don't know if it's going to make a difference. The Congress is a very, very hard place. But getting more people involved will eventually force people out of sheer shame like Marco Rubio to start addressing this issue. But listen, I mean, obviously this is a very emotional issue, but if you put the emotions aside somehow, if you can, the facts don't support what Marco Rubio was saying. Look at Connecticut. I mean, after Connecticut, I don't have to tell you, that's your state. After Newtown, everybody thought things would change. Congress couldn't figure out how to do it. So your state of Connecticut did it on its own. And when they passed, more strict gun laws, gun deaths went down in Connecticut. There's a direct correlation. Why don't, why don't some senators realize that? Well, the, the, the facts are incontrovertible here. And I mean, there's just example after example. You know, in the 1990s, when there was a brutal mass killing in Australia, you know, Australia passed laws that made it much harder to get your hands on, on weapons of war, like the AR-15, which was used in this and so many other school killings. And they haven't had any other uh, since then, since the mid-90s, have they had this sort of thing in Australia. So the problem is people like Marco Rubio and Speaker Ryan, and sad to say, most Republicans in Congress, and to be fair, a few Democrats, um, they can't allow the conversation to go to facts. This is why the NRA puts up videos that try to scare Americans. They go to emotions. They go to fear. You know, uh, people want to take away your guns. Nobody wants to take away people's guns. We just don't want to be any different than Canada or Australia or Great Britain, where you can get guns. You just get checked out. You can't get weapons of war. Uh, they have reasonable, yes, mental health systems that uh, allow for the identification of people like the shooter at, uh, in Sandy Hook or this individual in Florida. Um, there is a lot that we could do that would bring this to a close. The problem is that people like Marco Rubio and Speaker Ryan will not not allow that conversation to happen because it will cut off the flow of money from the NRA and groups like it uh, that are funding uh, these guys to pr precisely to stop any meaningful change on gun safety. Well, look, the president and lots of other people say that Democrats do bear some responsibility here. Here's his tweet from this weekend. He says, just like they don't want to solve DACA problem, why didn't the Democrats pass gun control legislation when they had both the House and the Senate during the Obama administration? Because they didn't want to, and now they just talk. So Democrats had their chance. 
Well, uh, you know, like so many of Donald Trump's uh, tweets, that is uh, unbalanced, inaccurate, and nearly insane. The reason the Democrats weren't able to pass uh, gun control when they did, in fact, in 2009-2010 uh, control uh, the Congress was that Mitch McConnell, Republican leader of the Senate, led a filibuster. And as we all know, you need 60 votes in the Senate to pass anything. Mitch McConnell, despite there being more than a majority of the Senate willing to support a bipartisan bill on gun safety, Mitch McConnell led a filibuster uh, against a piece of legislation that was supported by some 90 percent uh, of Americans. So nice try, Mr. President. But as usual, you really got to put the phone down. Uh, very quickly, there is this um, bipartisan effort now in Congress for expanded background checks. Chris Murphy, John Cornyn, do you have a sense that this will go anywhere? Well, I, I got to tell you, Allison, I, I hate to say it in the face of the activism and the optimism of the young people in Florida today, but no, I have zero confidence that, we'll, that this will go anywhere. Remember, it was just a couple of months ago after Las Vegas that we were talking about um, uh, regulating or ending bump stocks, something most of us had never heard of. Where did the piece of legislation that would, uh, that would stop bump stocks go? Well, you know, people moved on to other things, and the opponents of gun safety in Congress got, got uh, deliberately interested in other things. So, no, I'm not confident. I will be pleasantly surprised if after this round of deaths we finally get something passed. But, Allison, much more likely, I fear, is that sometime in the next 10 days, 10 days, statistically speaking, we're going to see another one of these school killings, and we'll be back on TV scratching our heads about why we can't get anything done here. God, I pray you're not right. Um, very quickly about Russia, what do you think the idea that there have been 13 Russians now indicted by Robert Mueller, where do you think this leads? I mean, you're on House Intel. What do you think this does, the, the investigation? Well, I think the main thing is it, it does is it hopefully, uh, and maybe the president's tweet would suggest that he's headed in this direction, hopefully now we can get a clear uh, communication out of the White House that it was not a hoax, that it wasn't a 400-pound guy sitting on his bed, that this is not something the Democrats made up. You know, one of the things that has damaged our ability to respond to this is that when the President of the United States is denying that it occurred, uh, it's sort of hard to speak with one voice about what we do to prevent it in future. So I think Bob Mueller did us a, a, a real service by by coming out from a law enforcement angle where we knew the intelligence community has been for a long time, which is that this was a very, very serious attack on our, on our elections. Congressman Jim Himes, thank you very much for being with us this morning. Thank you, Allison. Dave.